Our book for today is Black Magic, and uh, we're very lucky. We have uh, the author and the translator here with us. If I may ask a question that always, I always ask authors, it's how do you write? Do you sit and you start writing? Do you know when you start the book how it ends? Do you have all the details? Or you just start to write and then the character takes you somewhere? Or do you do some research? Do you build it? The first work it takes about three years to write it, black magic. Uh, private pleasures take about two years and a half. Uh, the Dreamers and Revolution takes about uh, 20 months. So I think now I, I start to write faster. So when you start to have the whole idea? No, no, I, I think that writing is something happens when you are writing. That's the real writing. In my view, maybe you have an idea, you, you have some sentences, and from it you start to, to develop it, so you discover what you will write in this book. Sometimes I write a lot to know what I will write. So you edit after that? after you write, write, and then you cut and paste and stuff? <coughs> I usually write the, the text uh, handle style. How? Because of uh, every session, I start with the first sentence, and then go to the next. If I start in uh, page five, so when I start to work, I will start from page one. And read all across, them. across the work. So I am writing every sentence a lot of times, hundreds, maybe thousands of times. So you go back to the beginning? Own. Every time you go back to the very beginning? Yes, yes. I, 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 I can't start when, I, when, when I, I start. I start from the beginning, from the first uh, phrase in the novel. So and if you're on page 138, you go back to page 1? Yes. You ask me about research. Uh, when I am writing uh, The Dreamers in a Revolution, yes, in this work, uh, I read thousands of uh, newspapers, magazines, about the investigation about the revolutions, and uh, what people said, and a lot of articles, and uh, a lot of videos, a lot of uh, photos. It was uh, a great material for me to I'm sure you, all your life, you enjoyed reading and writing, and you've always wanted to write a book or books. This now, has it become sort of a job? Is it sometimes something you don't want to do because it's a job, because you have to do it, because you have a deadline? But for me, writing is not a job at all. Mm. Um, writing is my life, because um, I discovered myself and the world through writing, and only through writing. And I think that's what every artist do, discover his, himself and discover the world and the others through his own artistic medium, through colors, through melody, sounds, through words in, in, our, uh, in our art, it is just words. So words is my life. And uh, I, I, I never think that uh, it's a professional work, it's a job. No, it's, it's more than that. It's an art. Art big books are so cheap. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, can, a, do you write? For me, for, for you me. say it's not a job, so you don't see it from a financial perspective you're making. Sometimes I, I bid a lot to write. Yeah. I'm working in different TV and making ah, okay. documentary okay. films, and uh, I, I have see. a job. I really have a job. Yeah. But especially when I, I, I finish a book, it's not a holiday, but uh, I can stay at home for six months. But I paid a lot to have time mm. to write. You never force yourself to start writing at home. Today I'm going to write like a couple of Up pages. Up to now, not at all. No, no, not, not at, at all. all. Never have it before for me. Have you wrote uh, two work, uh, worked in two works, two books at the same time? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. But it was for the first time for Lionsburg and uh, 
that Zimmer is in revolution, but it, it, it is very um, a rare thing for me to do that. But uh, I don't know. I, I was in uh, a very strange uh, mood and. Uh, About the mood, do you think that sometimes you write something that you are really uh, emotionally attached to it, and perhaps you need to uh, look at what you're writing in some other people's perspective? This thing is really emotional, it's really touching me, but uh, maybe for other people it's uh, not quite the same because of personal experience or because of whatever you are made of. Uh, do, you, do you face a problem like this? Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to have to put your feelings in a way that people may uh, understand it the way you do, or you just put it the way you feel it? When I'm writing, uh, I, 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 I never think uh, about the reader. Nothing? No, uh, I j or the market, or uh, the taste of the readers, or the Egyptian, or in English, or in other languages. I just try to concentrate on this very, um, very, very hidden uh, elements, what we can call uh, art. Many times uh, I did not care about the result. Several times I, I wrote a lot and I never published uh, any paper of them. I just publish what I love. Do you ever show your work to anyone when it's still in progress? I mean, you know, some writers won't show anything to anyone until it's a complete manuscript, and other people will, you know, write a piece and then show it to someone and wait for their opinion, and then, you know, based on that they'll write. What kind of writer no, are you? I mean, I do you never, show to anyone? I, I never did it before, but uh, okay. I usually publish some chapters, some pieces from the work in magazines and newspapers. Wow. Maybe before I, I finish it. About the translation, uh, now Humphrey Davis is here, as you all know. Uh, you said this in a previous <coughs> interview. In the end, it's his own translation. It's not my work in English, then you don't feel like it's your work in English? No, what I mean is it's, it's Hunter's translations, and it's his own English language, and he picked up this part of novel, but it's not my word, because my word, my word is in Arabic, but his word is in English. Do you agree with that, Humphrey? I, I, th I mean, I think that uh, I too, when I, when I heard that on your interview, in in Pittsburgh? Yes. Um, <laughs> my, my initial thought was, oh, dear. Um, I didn't, obviously, I didn't represent his work right. But I know, I'm, I'm hearing you now, I realize of what you mean. And I knew that you really didn't mean that. Well, you would have told me long ago, right? Um, but what I think that you were saying there was that um, once the work is translated into another language, you view it as an independent work of art. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a theory that uh, Humphrey Davis has. He told me one time that the translator is like an actor in a theater. And try to imagine that it's a play for Shakespeare, so Othello or Hamlet will be Humphrey Davis. So he do the same thing with this language. So he's dealing with, with the text in a language and try to <coughs> act it. Mm. in his own language. So. Yeah. From which it also follows that another actor would give a different performance. Mm. Different performances might be equally valued and people might in fact enjoy the difference between different performances, mm. and, but uh, they're all equally valid, or maybe equally valid. There may be crappy performances too, um, so on. But I mean, that's, I like very much that metaphor. Uh, you, you've also translated Private Pleasures. What, what do you like about translating Hamdi's work? Or what do you find challenging? Well, what I like about it is, is I, I guess, I mean, in, in general terms, what I like about any good book, and that is that it is, first of all, it is um, uh, important. In other words, it deals with things that matter. That doesn't have to mean that it deals with public events, obviously not, you know, that it deals with really important personal things is just as important. And that's very much the case with both those books, right? Um, and that, I mean, specifically in the case, well, in, in both cases, 
There's the, the issue of personal obsession and love and sex and issues that are very not, are not very often really dealt with and gripped fully in, in Arabic literature. Sometimes they are, but some, very often they're not. And this is a thing that I think every literature in the world is, has dealt with, and every society in the world has dealt with, the degree in which it's, you can deal with things that are considered intimate. But in any case, that's one aspect of it, the, the sheer importance of the issues with which Hamdi deals. The second is, um, it's, Hamdi's novels are, I can't, searching, searching for a better word, but somehow authentic. I and mean, they really represent Hamdi, and I know that. I mean, in the sense that as an author, I mean, it's very often you read novels and you think, this person, in a way, seems to be imitating what he thinks a novel should be like. Um, and they may have a certain degree of, of stylistic talent or something like that. But reading Hamdi, as with reading any really talented no novelist, no, this book comes from right inside, and it's not preconditioned by expectations of what the novel are, even though Hamdi is ex actually extremely erudite in terms of literary history and, and the, the, the development of the Arabic novel in terms of European models and all that kind of thing. But in the end, it's a, it's a personal vision. Uh, um, and that is something else that I like about it very much. Challenges, tense, always tense, tense, tense. And I think that anybody who's here who's a native speaker of Arabic may not realize just what a problem that poses for me, at least as a translator. But the sense of the number of things that are going on between, first of all, a different, a different possibly a different syntactical logic in Arabic about tense, matched with combining perhaps with certain things that have happened in other European literatures, such as French, uh, where there's a different style of narrative. And, and the whole issue of do you dis what tense do you use in any language to, to talk in narrative terms? Because actually what you're doing is, and if the present tense or the if the present tense represents things as they really are, is it in fact the most appropriate tense to use when you're telling a story, which really, in some sense, really isn't, right? Because it's a story. And in English, we've got around that basically by using the past tense. Now, that's the basic way in which we tell stories. He did, he said, he went, he did, he, he ate, and so on. Um, it's different in Arabic. And there are many different very technical issues concerned with it, which I'm sure any Arabic speaker here will have some sense of. Um, and making that, carrying that over without getting yourself tied into knots can sometimes be quite difficult. That is no more a challenge in Hamdi's novels, I have to say, than in anybody else's, any other Arabic novels, uh, I don't think. You have your notes? And then you sit with the author and you discuss what did you mean by this or why? In a, in a sense, yes. I don't just write down separate notes. What I do is I mark my copies I'm going through. Um, both on the computer, I use color to mark certain phrases. And then I mark them in the Arabic text. And then, yes, when, when, we're, when I'm done with the first draft, um, Hamdi and I uh, sit down and we go through everything that I have a question about, and I ask him about exactly what he meant by this. Or maybe it's just a word that I simply don't know. I've never come across. Um, Hamdi uses um, colloquial fairly frequently and fairly freely in uh, conversation and sometimes in interior dialogue, and um, there's always new words to learn in colloquial. And for example, with private pleasures, we did something that we haven't done before, which is um, I asked Hamdi to take me on a tour of his personal Giza, since Private Pleasures is, in a sense, I mean, it's very much set in Giza. Um, and I wanted to see the places that, um, that he talks about in the novel. Mostly, perhaps, in a sense of, well, I'm just interested. I really want to get more into this. Um, and in a few cases, because I was puzzled by when he said that the taxis were moving in this direction, and as far as I could remember, yeah, the taxis yeah. were moving in that yeah, direction. Yeah. Depends which side of the street are we talking about here. You know, a few technical things like that, but mostly just so that I could kind of uh, 
satisfy my the personal interest that he created as to what this thing called Giza actually is. Like Nagib Mahfouz, you believe that your uh, book have his its own life when you finish it. Uh, if it is becomes translated book or a movie or something, have its, its own uh, its own life. So, uh, uh, do you plan also like Nagib Mahfouz for your book? Do you make like a script, for, uh, a biography for the characters? You you know Nagib Mahfouz used to ah, yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, this way to make things. files and. I start uh, the work from maybe from an idea, from a scene, from the language itself, from a phrase that I, uh, I wrote, and after that try to develop it. I start uh, with uh, a short paragraph, and then I, I have an idea about the character. I try, I have some notes about him, describing him and. Uh, I have I have a files. Maybe I I, 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 have, I write my handwriting in just in, in a paper like 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 this. Uh, here uh, the women the first chapter called Rohaya, the second called Spade, and then I, I will say it's right when I finish it. But just it's 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 not. But it's not the the system of. To making files, to know what will happen from the first to page to the last page. No, no. Writing for me is something happen when you are writing in game. And uh, it's a battle too. It's a battle with with language, and it's it's very important for me this uh, to discover the the melody of language in this world to discover uh, the dictionary of this, of this work, too. You just uh, told that you're writing about the revolution. Aren't you afraid that in the, in the current political situation, writing a novel uh, about the Egyptian revolution uh, can cause you trouble? Can cause you trouble? Yeah. I mean, you see, you're, during the... In the Mubarak regime, during the Mubarak regime, several writers were accused of, of uh, by Islamists, like you know, apostasy, whatever, heresy, and things like that. And sometimes, I mean, in Egypt generally, they find writers and they blame on things that are really common. But uh, right now, I mean, this is a hot topic. What happened in Egypt? Aren't you afraid that the, the political perception won't be good? When you present an art like a book, thinking ideas, and uh, an art must be responsibility of it. A part of this responsibility is to be against the authority, to be the responsibility of your own values about freedom, about social justice about uh, the corruption against dictatorship. And anyway, if, if, you, if you are uh, frank with yourself, you will say, um, um, in, 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 the, in, the, in the view of any authority, indeed, you're making a crime every day. Every book for them is a crime because you're speaking about Freedom, you speak about jazz, you speak about poverty, you speak about you are against Hassan Barak, you are against Sisi, you are against the Ikhwan, you are with, 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 with what you think it's, it's right and good for the human being. So if you are afraid of what you have a responsibility about, you will do nothing. I never uh, feel afraid that is, I face the result of that because I know, because I decided to be in this way, to do, to do, to take this political situations in my little world, to use this language, to, to be brave somehow, to speak about sex, to speak about policy, to speak about religion. What surprised you most in writing this book? You said when you're writing, you're, you're, you're finding, you find out what you're writing about while writing. So when you were writing the book, what's, what was most surprising? 
to you in your discoveries? About black magic? While writing, yeah. No, uh, maybe I discover for the first time I can finish it. I can finish it. <laughs> because I tried twice before I did. But uh, two manuscripts, two novels, but I never like to, to work in, in them again and to publish them. So it's the first time that I feel I feel it as well. And in terms of uh, your characters, when you start writing, do you have some sort of an inspiration for the character? You see someone, you read about someone, you know someone, and then he or she inspire you. Yeah, for me, it, it, it always starts with a real person. Mm. Uh, some people that uh, I saw, uh, I have a relationship with them. M my experience itself, what I, I saw maybe for once in my life, so, but it comes when I'm writing. <coughs> so there's always this image that you see yeah, when you're Yeah, and the, there. there's, there's a lot of uh, persons that I wrote about them in mm -hmm. my works, but they start to become a literary mm -hmm. character. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of difference between them and the reality. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what, what the, the art world needs to try to recreate what we call the reality mm -hmm. in, in its own reality the artistic reality. And for me, the artistic reality is more real than the what we call the reality, indeed, because it's it's an art, it has an effect. It's, uh, it doesn't have boundaries, it doesn't have social norms. You can just yeah. write me. Deleted a lot of detail that we, we, mm. we, we, we have in our real life, what mm. we call real life. Now, no politics is no more a taboo and uh, we have the rest sexual and religion so now more and more people are pushing more in this do you feel this in sense of what you read around for the new generations i think very long time ago uh, i decided to be a free man so i decided to be a free man i haven't read lines my red lines and my work is are to do an artistic work a real artistic Artistic red line. So it's it's my, my red line, my own red line. <coughs>